I'm Laura Walker-Hudson. I'm the CEO of the Kawanja Foundation, which is one of two organizations that run the Frontline SMS project. But why SMS? So there are 6.3 billion mobile connections in the world. The UN says that 90% of us have access to a mobile, even if it's a shared mobile phone. On a really low-end phone, the kind of old Nokia or something that we all have 10 of in a bottom drawer somewhere, you're pretty limited in your options. You can make calls, you may be able to access the internet, and you can send SMS. And SMS is the digital platform that is the easiest for infrastructure to reach. In, in many of the places in the world where there are serious social change issues to fight and c communication is very difficult, it's because infrastructure is very poor. Most of Africa doesn't have fixed-line telephony, doesn't have broadband internet, but does have increasing numbers of mobile networks, mobile towers, even in places that you'd think would be very difficult to get infrastructure set up in. There are studies that show that even the most conflict-prone countries, um, that actually those countries like Chad, like Afghanistan, uh, like Somalia, have the fastest growing mobile penetration um, because communication is so difficult that mobile is the only thing that works. And when the network is not very good, so when you're not dealing, as in the developed world, with um, cell towers very close together, you're dealing with one every 30 miles or so, often you get a very weak signal. And as you'll know from any time when you, the network is conge congested, like after a major sporting event or at New Year's, um, SMS can get through even if it takes a while, even if the network is congested. And it doesn't matter if the person you're sending it to doesn't get it straight away or indeed gets it and doesn't look at it. So SMS can be sent from any handset, work on any phone, and it doesn't need a strong signal to be sent. It's also asynchronous. SMS is is very immediate when you you probably sneak a look at your mobile phone every few minutes to see what's going on and if you have an sms or if you hear it come in you're likely to read it swiftly and you're unlikely to delete it unread if you compare that to our behavior with email that's obviously very different if you put that in a developing world context you can imagine that there are people who have email accounts because often telecenters and internet cafes are quite widespread but they won't be able to check them every day or they won't be able to check them very easily. It might be that checking your email involves a lengthy walk to get to the, the place where you can get online and then get back again. Or imagine actually where internet and SMS intersect and you can imagine using SMS to prompt a member of staff or a community member that you're engaging with to check their email for a longer piece of information. So you can start to see how these use cases can really knit together. And if you think about the fact that you really carry your phone with you all the time, you can imagine how SMS is very suitable for intimate information. So your phone is always in your pocket or your handbag. You read it very quickly. You pretty much are the person who has control of your phone. You can therefore perform very effective interventions by sending someone an SMS that means a lot to them but that can, and that can prompt them to do something or by giving them access to contacting you from a device like that. So a couple of examples. I talked to a user who was working with young people with mental disabilities, um, many of whom were had been in trouble with the law and were in the probation system. Um, many of these kids didn't make their probation appointments, which led to custodial sentences. If you can send them an SMS to remind them to go, then that's a tiny intervention on your part, but with a massive impact on the lives of the people you're texting. And we've seen many programs do similar things to remind patients to take their antiretroviral drug drugs, for example, in the case of HIV and AIDS. There are populations in the developed world who don't have regular access to internet, just as people in the developing world don't. And that might be because they're leading chaotic lives or they're living on a lower income. But for some people, the kinds of stability, the credit checks and all the rest of it that you have to have to own a computer or to be able to have a smartphone on a contract mean that SMS is far more accessible than email. If you think of the example of people who are rough sleeping, who are homeless, um, a friend of mine used to work at a soup, a soup kitchen and she used to say that the most common request she had was for people to plug their phones in behind the counter. People don't necessarily have an address, but they'll have a phone number, even if it doesn't have any credit. That is their address. So you can see how you can reach the most vulnerable in society by using SMS, which is the lowest common denominator platform. So arguably, SMS is the most widespread digital communications platform that the world has ever seen. And for community organizations, being able to send, receive, and manage information in a complex way is extremely important and can be very powerful. 
Frontline SMS is used in a, almost every conceivable area of social change work and increasingly by businesses and commercial entities as well. The reason for this is that there are very few ways to really do um, community engagement and to manage information in, in a sophisticated way using a computer without using someone else's interface or using the a direct service provided by a mobile network operator or an aggregator. What we try to do is to really put the power of SMS in the hands of the organisations that want to use it and make it very easy for them to set up projects fast and to set up projects in multiple places at once using software that's very configurable. So we work to make it possible for you to collect and receive uh, data, both from the community and from your staff, to run polls over the radio or um, by sending out SMS to ask questions, to, to run subscription services, to hook up SMS to a Twitter account and be able to broadcast out the messages that you receive. And we're building new functionality all the time.